and welcome to SUP Sound Bites. My name is Alex Awesome, and I'm honored to kick off this new web series, which is intended to introduce you to our work under the Global Elections and Political Transitions Award in partnership and funded by our friends at USA. So what is SEPS? Also known as the Consortium for Elections and Political Process Strengthening, this consortium is comprised of the three premier international organizations dedicated to international democratic development, consisting of the International Foundations for Electoral Systems, the International Republican Institute, and the National Democratic Institute. Today, we're looking at Political Parties in the Digital Age project, which does a comparative review of digital technology in campaigns around the world. So let's start with a brief introduction of our panelists um, and a brief overview of the project. Um, Jeffrey and Jan, who are you? My name is Jeffrey McDonald. I'm IRI's Bangladesh Country Director and was the co-editor of the Political Parties in the Digital Age project. And I am Jan Sarchuk. I'm Senior Director for Transatlantic Strategy at IRI. I've done a lifetime in political party studies and with Jeffrey, the co-editor of Political Parties in the Digital Age. So let's get straight into it. Um, my first question is for you, Jeffrey. Um, so technical capacities of governments around the world vary at a large level. Um, so how did you determine your case studies for this project um, and equivalent data capacities to measure? So to select case studies, case studies, we created a global data set based on two factors, the level of ICT infrastructure and the level of democratic freedom. We then selected six countries with different levels of each factor to explore how this variation shapes the way political parties use digital technology. Ah, okay. <laughs> um, and then from this research, John, uh, what are some key considerations and takeaways that you found uh, when, when writing this comparative review? Well, you know, I think as we've seen in so many other applications uh, across the world in political life, technology in and of itself is valueless and it really brings with it both pluses and minuses depending on how it's used, right? Um, in terms of the way the technology is commonly used to benefit political parties around the world, I think it's pretty clear that um, they are able to use technology to communicate better internally inside the party. Um, to amplify messages, party messages, you know, ideas and policy proposals across various kinds of communication platforms so that their voter outreach is more efficient um, and to use technology um, as a means to uh, improve their actual offline voter engagement, right? Um, small parties we've seen time and time again um, are able to use technology uh, in a way that makes them competitive with larger parties with more resources um, than they otherwise might uh, be able to be. But of course, there's always a downside too, right? Um, and I think for many parties across the world, it's really tough um, to tailor messages specific to segments of the population without violating norms or laws about privacy, um, mm -hmm. depending on what those rules are in a country. Um, there's also a challenge uh, with regard to how much money to spend on it, right? Um, Political party leaders, in particular those from older generations, I think are tough to convince um, of the need to resource uh, this area of party work uh, sufficiently. Um, and you know, there's also um, a lot of risk associated with digital technology. Uh, cybersecurity, digital safety requires an infrastructure in a party and a culture of security in a party that sometimes uh, just isn't quite at hand yet. Um, and that presents parties with some challenges, right? That they have to figure out ways um, to fight through and to put policies in place, policies in place to deal with. Um, and I guess, uh, so on that note and talking a little bit about some challenges. So uh, as you're both aware, we're, we're not in ordinary times of project implementation or election cycles. Um, so what are kind of the COVID-19 effects of political party work in the digital sphere? Great question. Um, and. Uh, you know, we're in the middle of it still, right? Um, I'm speaking to you tonight from Bratislava, Slovakia. We just went into lockdown over the weekend again. Um, but, you know, I think it's, it's clear that um, digital technologies have given parties and governments an ability to communicate with their voters and with citizens about the nature of the pandemic 
um, and about government resources that are available to respond to it. Um, I, for example, um, I mean, I happen to carry a Slovak passport. When I landed here in Slovakia three weeks ago from the United States, I immediately got an, e an email um, from the Ministry of Health that said that I was due to report five days later for a COVID test, exactly where, exactly when, exactly how. Unimaginable, you know, um, yeah. even just 10 years ago, right? So in that sense, um, I think uh, digital technology has really enabled uh, governments, if they use it right, um, and parties, if, if they use it right, um, to uh, communicate what needs to be done to help keep people safe and get the economies in the various countries that are affected back up and running. Well, it's good to see that <laughs> that um, countries are doing something and that we're kind of seeing adaptation take place. Um, it can work. It can work. <laughs> um, so I, I want to thank you both um, for taking the time to join me today um, and for everyone out there for more information about our work in democracy and governance, please visit us on our website, www.seps.org, which is C-E-P-P-S. Um, this has been Sep Sounds, but Sound Bites. Thank you guys. <laughs>